What's going on YouTube? Nicole Spence here. Okay, so today I'm going to, I guess, teach, show you guys how to make, I like to make chicken and sausage gumbo for my clients at my fishing bed and breakfast down in Venice, Louisiana. Um, gumbos are great. You can do seafood gumbos. Like I said, you can do sausage chicken. So today I'm going to make a sausage and chicken gumbo. And where we're starting is Basically, I've got my big pot here, as you can tell. I typically like to use a wooden spoon. And I cheated a little bit. So with a roux, um, a homemade roux is probably the best way to go about it, but I'm actually from Florida and live in, living in Louisiana, so I'm still kind of learning. And as far as the roux goes, uh, for me, I've got it in here. We're going to start it out. We're going to go ahead and turn it on. And you have to burn that roux down. So the roux that I'm using, you can buy this at the store. It's not super expensive. It's like $5, but there you go. It's a roux. So old-fashioned, real Cajun. I mean, it gets the job done. So anyways, I don't know if you can hear that sizzling, but... I turn this on probably around, I would say, I, I put it on half, I put it on five. And you just have to let this melt down a little bit. Okay, so that roux is starting to smell really good. But anyways, back to, so you're going to want to do about a onion and a half, four socks of celery, uh, about a pepper and a half, a, a bell pepper, you could do two, and you want to chop it up about like so, and you want to add parsley and green onion, that's going to be a little bit later on, because you add the green onion in, you add all this stuff in and you just kind of let it cook down after the roux is cooked down, which the roux does take a, take a little while. I'd say 15 minutes of letting it just cook and it's on medium right now. And you're just letting this roux really cook down. It's, it's starting to smell really good. And another thing, you can't burn your roux. If you burn your roux, it actually ruins your entire gumbo. So you wanna be sure to keep an eye on it. And when you start to, it smells good, but here in a few minutes, I'm gonna have to add some water just so it doesn't start to burn the bottom. Cause it's on medium heat and it's cooking right now, so. guys I'm just hanging out in my uh, some of my salt life gear this is one of their athletic tops and athletic bottoms as you can tell I love salt life I'll have the link in the description below if you guys want to get you some bikinis or lifestyle gym wear like I said this is kind of like a sports top like a gym sports bra and leggings but they're uh, they don't go all the way to my ankles. They're just uh, about to the calf, leggings. Super comfortable. Okay, so I, it's starting to smell a little bit, so we're gonna add some water. Oh yeah. What you guys think? I wish, you know, you could smell What's going on over here? Let's add some more. So we're just going to add a little bit of water like so and mix that all around. And yes, gumbo is a dark, ooky looking brown color. Um kind of like, you know, it's a, it's definitely a Cajun recipe. People in Louisiana make it. And it's something that takes all day to cook. And 
you can make a huge pot of it like, like so. So that's what I do. And typically what I like to do is cook my gumbos and then freeze them. Because when you freeze a gumbo, it actually, with all the flavoring and everything, when you bring it back to life and you unfreeze it, and you're ready to serve it, everything gets absorbed into the chicken and the sausage and just all the, oh, it's so good, so tasty. So I'll kind of show you guys. I'm just letting this through melt down, but I kind of show you guys what's going on over here. This is my gumbo roux that we are starting. Oh, it's looking good, guys. So it starts out a super dark color and you just keep adding. And you gotta keep stirring. And I typically like, like I said before, I like to use the wooden spoon. All right, so as you can tell, it's starting to cook down a little bit. And when it cooks down, that's when you wanna add some water to it. So we're gonna do that. Add a little bit more water to this. Just do a little bit, not too crazy. Because we're almost ready to start putting the onions, bell peppers, and celery in and melt those down. Okay, so for me, I mean, some people just add water. For more flavoring, I do chicken broth, and I I buy the really big um, things of chicken broth because I'm making so many, you know, I'm cooking so many gumbos for all my clients throughout, you know, the year. So I do these, which are ch little chicken broths. And you just kind of add, I don't know, I add six to eight of them. And it just gives your gumbo a lot more flavor. I mean, who doesn't want the extra flavor, right? So that's two. Also, you can't just walk away from your gumbo. You have to make sure you constantly are stirring it because if you burn this roux in the beginning, it'll ruin your entire gumbo. So you don't want to do that. That's four. Five, give it some more stirs. Ooh, it's looking so good. It's melting down just like it's supposed to. So I know my channel is Outdoor Adventures with Nicole, and I know this is cooking, but you guys have actually requested for me to do more cooking. That's why I decided to wear my sports bra. And just so, if you guys don't already know, I own and operate a fishing bed and breakfast down in Venice, Louisiana. So basically my clients, you know, go through me. It's a one-stop shop. They contact me if they want to come stay. It's an all-inclusive lodge where I do, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, and snacks. Price includes your bed as well. And um, if they don't have a captain or a charter already lined up, I go ahead and get them lined up with it. That way, it, you know, it's a one-stop shop. They don't have to go here, they don't have to go there, they don't know who to recommend. Like, I, I'm partnered up with so many houseboats. I have 12 at Venice Marina, or 11 at Venice Marina, and one in Cypress Cove, which Cypress Cove Marina is actually just right next door. Um, it's a very nice marina, and Venice is too. It's, everybody just wants to be in Venice, so. Uh, but it's, it's your preference, really. But, uh, 
So I do everything. I come over early in the morning. I wake up at like three o'clock in the morning before you guys are gonna, you know, you're gonna go out on your charter. And I come cook you breakfast. I make your lunches. I pack up all your drinks, if your Gatorade, soda, and water for the day that you guys are gonna be taking, your snack bag, send, it, send you on your way with your captain. And then when you guys are on your way in through the pass, it's about, you start getting service about 20 minutes out. So either my captain or my clients will text me and say, hey, Nicole, I'm on my way. And I will be cooking all day while you guys are gone if, if I don't go fishing with you. By the way, sometimes if I have, say, a gumbo ready, I have clients that are checking in in two days and I'm making this gumbo for them. So if I already have you know, a meal that's ready at, for dinner or it's only gonna take me about 45 minutes to prepare versus all day, like this gumbo takes all day, then yes, I'll go fishing with my clients sometimes. But anyway, so basically, whenever, you got, whenever the client is on their way in, I head over to the houseboat and start getting dinner ready. And when you guys get home, or back to the docks, your captain will go fillet your fish. You can either go to the houseboat or if you guys wanna go to the marina and show off your amazing catch because we all know, probably caught a bunch of swordfish or yellowfin tuna. By the way, if you didn't know, Venice, Louisiana is known for their yellowfin tuna. We get massive yellowfin tuna and nowhere in the entire world, this is why they call Venice, Louisiana the best fishing in the world, is because you can't catch a swordfish and a yellowfin tuna, huge, in one day. And we did that last year, actually. So it's very possible. The fishery is amazing here. Our inshore, your redfish, your trout, um, your triple tail. Our triple tail in Venice get like 30 pounds. I mean, your average one is over 20 pounds. Where in Florida, where I'm from, the triple tail are very small. If you found, if you get a 15 pound triple tail in Florida, I mean, you're doing backflips. That's huge. But over here, they literally are doubled. All right, so I think it's time to add the veggies. Add these in. Perfect. Two. I know what you're dealing with over here. Ooh, look at that. All right, so we're just gonna let these cook down. Oh, it's starting to smell so good. Mix these all up with the roux. And you really just let this cook down for, I mean, you have to constantly keep stirring it. You can't just walk away. Um, you really wanna stay on top of it because you just don't wanna burn. You just don't wanna burn that roux. It'll really ruin your whole gumbo. Um, you just keep stirring and I cook this for, I don't know, I'd say probably about 15, 20 minutes of just letting these vegetables kind of cook down. So I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let it do that for a little bit and then we'll be back. All right guys, I'm gonna do an Instagram story. If you're not already following me on Instagram, be sure to follow me. It's Nicole underscore Spence. And you know, as I'm trying to vlog and tell my story about life and everything, um, you know, for YouTube and then for also on Instagram. Woo, look at that gumbo. Mmm, off to the right start. And not everybody does this, but um, for mine, I like to add rotel, a little bit of tomatoes in there. 
I think it just gives it a little bit more flavor. So I put those in there. Let them cook in with the rest of the vegetables. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, Louisiana hot sauce. Well, it's crystal, but oops. A little bit of hot sauce. Mix that in. All right, so now that we have been cooking this down, the vegetables down and everything for about a good 30 minutes, and constantly stirring. I think it might be ready. What do you guys think? Does that look? I think it looks pretty ready. So what I'm gonna do, oh, we got a little fog out there. Let's let that go over. Here we go. So since the vegetables have kind of melted down or cooked down, we are going to add more water. Still have it on medium heat. Oh yeah, this is looking really good. Add a little bit more water. Oh yeah. All right, so now what I'm going to do is cut up my chicken which I just buy big packs of chicken from Sam's and my sausage, which I buy big packs of sausage from Sam's as well. Um, it's all what you prefer if you like more of a Cajun sausage. I like the, my, I think mine is like a little bit of a Cajun and with a smoked, maybe a smoked sausage is what I like to put in mine. And in Louisiana, for, for the, the whole Cajun lifestyle culture, they do their gumbos with potato salad. And I just thought that was so strange because when I think of a gumbo, I think over rice. So for my clients coming from all over the country, but really all over, I mean all over the world, but all over at, at least the country. I have people from New York, Florida, Texas, Arkansas, I, I've had it all. Um, I will do a potato, a fresh potato salad, and I will make white rice so that they have rice and potato salad. And if they want both or one or the other, they can choose. It's it's an option. It's there. Because personally, I don't even like potato salad. I, yeah, you know, some people do, some people don't. But that is part of their culture. You know, the whole Cajun. Do it over put your gumbo over potato salad. So we are gonna make that as well. Probably not in this video, but. All right, so I've got my chicken. I'm just gonna put my chicken in here whole, like so. You can let it cook all the way through. And at this point, you can turn your temperature up to high. Because you want the chicken and the sausage to cook all the way through. But I'm putting the chicken in first, just so it makes sure that it gets cooked all the way through. And then I'm gonna work on chopping up my sausage. A little bit. So what I do is let this cook through and then I pull out the chicken once it's cooked and then shred it and then put it back into the gumbo. So that way all the juices go into the shredded pieces of chicken with the sausage and it comes out phenomenal. All right, so I've put the chicken in here. I've 
taken the chip, let it cook, and I took it out and I shredded it, and then I added the um, cut up sausage. I'll kind of show you guys what's going on over here now. So this is what it's looking like. This actually is better. So there's the shredded chicken and sausage. And I'd say this gumbo is pretty much done. I went and turned off the stove. I'm letting it cool down. Key to a gumbo though, you don't ever wanna just stick this in the refrigerator when it's still um, even warm. It needs to be completely cooled down. It can be, it really shouldn't even be warm. So you, you gotta let this sit for several hours to cool down. And once it's cooled down, then you put it in the refrigerator or if you decide you wanna freeze it, you put it in the freezer. Um, but it will sour if you put it in there while it's hot, if you put it in the refrigerator while it's still too warm or too hot. So don't ever do that because you'll just ruin it. So there is a key technique to getting the perfect gumbo and I think we got it right here. If you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button to follow more outdoor adventures with Nicole. Um, like I said before, I know this isn't outdoors, but my bed and breakfast is a fishing lodge. Um, I have 12 houseboats in Venice, Louisiana, and when you come down here to stay with me at the bed and breakfast, and I do all the cooking and cleaning and everything, it is you know a trip of a lifetime, but it has to do with outdoors. They're, they're going fishing, they're going hunting, they're going diving, whatever they're gonna be doing, but it's, it's mostly a fishing town. It's known as Tuna Town for our yellowfin tunas, and nowadays with our swordfish, so like I got my little swordfish charm here all right guys well I hope you enjoyed this and comment below any any other videos that you would like to see and stay tuned for the next one love you guys